Welcome to the Clinical Skills Podiatry Examination, APMLE, Step 2 Clinical Skills Examination. This video will be shown to you on the day of the exam as part of the orientation session before the exam begins. These clinical skills include taking a relevant medical history, performing an appropriate physical examination, communicating effectively with the patient, clearly and accurately documenting the findings and diagnostic hypothesis from the clinical encounter, and ordering appropriate initial diagnostic studies and or formulating a management plan. You must bring your scheduling permit, confirmation notice, and an unexpired government-issued form of identification that includes a photograph and signature, such as a current driver's license or passport. If you do not bring acceptable identification, you will not be admitted to take the test. Wear comfortable professional clothing and a clean white laboratory or clinic coat. The only equipment you are permitted to bring is an unenhanced standard stethoscope. If you forget to bring a laboratory coat or a stethoscope, one will be provided. However, the number of coats and stethoscopes available at each center is limited, and it is recommended that you bring your own. Personal items. The examination center contains locked storage. You will be able to place personal items that you might need during the exam or during breaks at your seat in the orientation room. You will need to keep your identification, cash, or one credit card with you at all times. The proctors will ask you to check all of your pockets, including your pants or skirt, shirt, and lab coat, inside and out, to ensure that you do not have any unauthorized items. The proctors will ask you to put all unauthorized items into the locked storage area. You may not keep pens, pencils, cameras, recorders, examination notes of any kind, reading materials, PDAs, watches, cell phones, beepers, communication devices, or medical equipment other than a standard stethoscope, that is, a stethoscope without any kind of enhancement, such as digital or electronic amplification, or any other enhancement, in the orientation area. Items such as these are not allowed to be used at any time during the exam, including breaks. They must remain in the locked storage area until the end of the exam. Failure to place unauthorized items into the storage area will be considered to be intentional. Possession of unauthorized items will be considered irregular behavior and these items will be confiscated. If a personal item you might need during breaks is in the storage area, for example, a toothbrush, medicine, or food, please take it out and put it on the table where you are sitting. The storage area will be locked and you will not have access to it, even during breaks, until the exam is over. Your last opportunity to visit the storage area will follow this video. On-site orientation. The on-site orientation session will include time for you to try out the diagnostic equipment available to you in the examination rooms. You are responsible for knowing how to use the equipment. It is strongly encouraged that you familiarize yourself with the equipment during the orientation. The exam. The complete exam process takes approximately eight hours and includes 12 patient encounters. During the exam, you will be provided a light meal during the 30 minute break after the fifth encounter. You will also have a 15 minute break after the ninth encounter. Discussion of the cases or the exams is not permitted during these breaks or at any other time during or after the examination. Each Step 2 Clinical Skills Testing Center simulates a large medical clinic. In the course of the examination, you will enter 12 different exam rooms and you will encounter a different standardized patient portraying a different case in each room. Each encounter begins with the examinee instruction sheet, which is posted on the exam room door. A copy of the examinee instruction sheet is also available inside the exam room. It includes information about the patient in that room, name, gender, and the reason for coming to see the doctor today. If vital signs are included, you should accept them as accurate. You may repeat them if you feel the case warrants that confirmation. However, if you do repeat the vital signs, continue to consider the vital signs as originally listed when developing your differential diagnosis and list of diagnostic studies. 
All announcements are made over the public address system. This is an automated system that maintains the official timing of the exam. After the proctors place you in front of your exam room door, you will hear a faint announcement coming from inside the exam room that will say, SPs, please prepare. There will be a 30 second delay, and then you will hear the announcement, Examinees, you may begin your first patient encounter. This is your first opportunity to review the examinee instructions and to write on your blue scrap paper. Do not slide the examinee instruction panel and do not begin writing until you hear the announcement to begin the encounter. Patient Encounters You will be permitted 15 minutes for each patient encounter, starting with the announcement to begin the encounter. Read the instruction sheet and then knock on the door and enter the room. Come in. Mr. Matthews? Yes. Hi, Dr. Romano. How you uh, What brought you in today? A little bit of ankle pain. Ankle pain? Oh, I'm sorry. Which ankle? Your role during the examination should be at least that of a first-year postgraduate resident physician with primary responsibility for the care of each patient. You should treat each patient you see as you would a real patient. Communicate in a professional and empathetic manner, being responsive to the patient's needs. Do not defer decision-making to others. It may be helpful to think of yourself working in a setting where you are the only provider present. You may introduce yourself however you wish, as either a medical student or as a doctor. You may introduce yourself using your real name. Do not mention the name of your school or institution. For most of the 11 cases that you will see, the patient will be in street clothes. In some cases, particularly in a hospital setting, the patient will be wearing a hospital gown. He or she will remain in role throughout the entire encounter. Please do not attempt to communicate with the standardized patients outside of their patient roles. Taking a history and performing the physical exam. The elements of the history and physical examination necessary for each case will be determined by the nature of the patient's problems. You will not have time to do a complete history and physical examination on every patient, nor will it be necessary to do so. In fact, if you attempt to do so, you may run out of time and will not be able to fully address the patient's communication needs. As you would when encountering real patients, you should answer any questions they may have, tell them what diagnoses you are considering, and advise them about any tests and studies you will order. When a complete history and physical is necessary, the examinee instructions will indicate this. Perform the physical exam maneuvers exactly as you would for real patients, respecting their comfort and modesty. Female patients will be wearing bras, which you may ask them to loosen or move if necessary for proper examination. Do not perform rectal examinations, internal pelvic exams, genital or genitourinary examinations, including inguinal hernia exams, female breast examinations, by which we mean palpation of breast tissue or nipple, corneal reflex examinations. Any of these maneuvers may be ordered as part of the diagnostic studies if you feel they are indicated. All other examination maneuvers are completely acceptable, including femoral pulse exams and inguinal node exams. Some physical exam findings may be simulated, except any physical findings as real. Avoid very forceful or deep palpation, you will be able to obtain the information you need without being unnecessarily forceful in carrying out any of the physical exam maneuvers. Areas of special concern in regard to unnecessarily forceful examinations include abdominal examination, examination of the gallbladder and liver, eliciting CVA, costovertebral angle tenderness, examination of the ears with the otoscope and the throat with the tongue depressor. These exam maneuvers are permitted, but do not be unnecessarily forceful in performing them. Equipment. Each room has a small stool or chair for examinees to sit on if they wish. Okay, so um, can you tell me? There is only one blood pressure cuff size in the room. It will fit all of our patients. The ophthalmoscope should come on when you lift it off the wall. However, if it does not, there are a couple of things to check. The dimmer switch is in the handle. It is possible that the examinee before you may have inadvertently left the dimmer switch down. So check that first. 
It is also possible that the previous examinee may have turned the power switch off. The otoscope should also come on when you lift it off the wall. Again, the dimmer switch is in the handle. Please use care when examining the ears with the otoscope. The optic speculums are disposable. Throw them out after use. There is a clock on the wall in each exam room. It can be used to assist in managing your time for each patient encounter, and can also be used to recheck the vital signs of the patient if you feel a recheck is warranted. The official exam timing is maintained by the automated announcements. There are five minutes remaining in this patient encounter. If you wish to dim the lights in the room, there is a switch nearby. If you activate that switch, the large overhead light will go out and a small light comes on so that the room is dim but not completely dark. On a shelf, you will find tuning forks, reflex hammers, goniometers, monofilaments, and rulers. There are jars with tongue depressors, cotton balls, and cotton tip applicators. There is also a jar of toothpicks for testing pinprick sensation. Throw them out after use. The sink area includes soap, water, alcohol wipes, paper towels, and a cup dispenser. The water is drinkable. There are also boxes of latex-free medium and large gloves. Please either wash your hands with soap and water before each examination or wear gloves. If you have any skin rash or open cuts on your hands, please wear gloves. At the foot of the bed is an extension for the patient's legs. There is also an extension with a small step stool for the patient to step on or off the table. If you have any problem with the equipment in the room, open the door, wave to the proctors, and ask for assistance. They will be happy to help you. Do not leave the room until you have completed the patient encounter. Concluding the patient encounter. After 15 minutes, you'll hear an announcement. This patient encounter is now over. You must now leave the room. Be sure that you have all the information that you need before leaving the room, because once you have left the room, you are not permitted to return. If you have left something behind in the exam room, just let the proctors know. They will be happy to go back and get it for you. You may not go back into the room yourself. Doing so may be considered misconduct and will be reported to MBPME. After the patient encounter, you'll complete the patient note. This is the medical record for documenting the information you obtained during the encounter. Write only the information you elicited from the patient through either the physical examination or history taking. Do not list examination procedures you could have done or questions you might have asked. You'll have 10 minutes to complete the patient note. If you leave the room early, you may use the additional time for the note. The patient note program uses a standard word processing format. Please be aware of the progress bar at the bottom of each field. It will let you know how much space is remaining while you are typing. If an error message appears, contact a proctor immediately. Do not press any keys or attempt to correct the error. Patient notes are automatically saved and information will not be lost if there is an error. You may refer to the examinee instructions while completing your patient note. Click on the examinee instructions tab to view the examinee instructions. You may list the vital signs if they are particularly relevant to the case. But in general, the patient note is for recording pertinent positive and negative history and physical exam findings, as well as relevant laboratory or imaging results. Try to be as specific as possible when you are writing up the elements of the physical exam and try to avoid simply writing the term normal. For example, if you find equal sensation bilaterally on a neurologic exam, write that instead of neuro exam normal. There are three formats of patient notes. You will encounter one format for cases in which there is a true differential diagnosis, such as an ulcer case in which the origin of the ulcer is unknown. For this type of patient note, List up to three diagnoses in the order of likelihood. If you want to change the rank order of your list, click on the arrows on the left of the screen. Under each diagnosis, there are fields for you to list the history and physical finding items that support each diagnosis. If you want to add more rows, click on the Add a Row button. 
The diagnostic studies should represent the first-line test you would like to use to narrow down your differential diagnosis. Your management plan should outline initial steps in treatment of this patient. Examples of first-line tests include blood tests, x-rays, MRI, EKG, and diagnostic procedures. Try to be as specific as possible when ordering diagnostic tests. Examples of initial management steps might be to prescribe an antibiotic, bracing device, or to admit the patient to the hospital. The second format of patient note will be used for cases in which the diagnosis is obvious and there is no true differential. An example of this would be a hammer toe case in which the patient presents with all information needed to make a single diagnosis. For this type of patient note, you should list only a single diagnosis. The third format of patient note will be used for cases in which there are simply assessments to be made rather than true diagnoses. An example of this would be a patient presenting for a full history and physical. You should make an assessment of the patient's status and there is no need to list supporting evidence from the history and physical examination. A list of acceptable abbreviations will be available during the exam. These are the abbreviations that we are guaranteed to understand. The patient notes are read by practicing clinicians, so use your judgment. When in doubt, write out the word. Occasionally, due to technical or administrative problems, you will not be able to type the patient note for one or more patient encounters. When this happens, examinees will be required to write their patient notes by hand. All examinees should be prepared for the possibility that they will have to write one or more patient notes by hand. Examinees, please stop writing or click Submit on your computer screen. Place pens on your desk, give your patient notes and blue scrap paper to the proctor. When you hear the announcement to stop writing, immediately click Submit and then Yes. If you are writing the note by hand, stop writing immediately. Stay seated as the proctors collect all paper used for that encounter. The blue scrap paper is shredded and not used for any type of scoring. Do not continue to write or type after the announcement to stop has been given. If anyone is observed writing after the announcement has begun, the administrator on duty will be informed and an incident report will be submitted to the MBPME. Doctors, please stand and move to the next exam room. Remain seated until the proctors tell you to move to the next station and wait until the announcement tells you to start the next encounter. At the end of the exam, you will be asked to complete a brief survey. Your responses will be strictly confidential and will not affect your scores on any step administration. All patient encounters are monitored. There are video cameras and microphones in each examination room. The recorded information is used for quality assurance, training, and research, but is not used for scoring. Any attempt to gain information about case scenarios or to share information on completed examinations is strictly prohibited. In fact, any cheating or disclosure of test materials may lead to permanent exclusion from the examination system. No discussion of cases at any time or anywhere is allowed, including the hallways, break rooms, after leaving the center, or on the internet, email, or list serves. Any disclosure of test materials could lead to being barred from all APMLE examinations. Before the exam begins, a staff member will be available to answer your questions. Remember, when in doubt, just do what you would in a real patient encounter.